Today we're going to talk about adding a backup camera to my 2013 F-150 Sync 1 system with a 4 inch screen. Now this is the original Sync 1 system, it did not have the nav add-on. You'll need a few things to get your backup camera working. Of course you're going to need Forescan for Windows or Android, whatever you use. I, I use Windows because it seems to be easier. Um, you get that and download that from Forescan. You need to get the extended license and apply for that. You need, of course, the rear camera, which I purchased the video system emblem version that goes on the back of your tailgate. That comes with the camera, a new emblem, as well as an extension cable and switch. The Y cable from 4D Tech, this is really the cable that you need for the Sync 1 systems without the nabs. There are other cables out there, so be careful you get the right one. This one plugs directly into the back of the display, not the radio. So. Um, the Sync 1 Systems Radios just has two large connectors on the back. No other options for additional accessories. And then of course you need a OBD uh, programmer uh, that you can connect to for scan. This is a Bluetooth model. I found it worked very well and you can get that from Amazon. The first thing you want to do is of course remove the emblem that's on your tailgate. I actually used a heat gun on um, the low heat and increased it until the glue that adhered the emblem uh, started to melt. I used a plastic uh, putty knife to sort of uh, get behind it and start to loosen it up. And then I had a little small metal crowbar that I could get in behind it and, and pull it off. After that you want to heat up the glue uh, and scrape as much glue off as you can to make sure it's a smooth surface for your new camera to mount. Um, be very careful, don't use a lot of heat because you can um, actually bubble your paint. So uh, just start at the low temperature and if it's not working just slowly increase it and keep, keep your gun moving back and forth across the emblem. You don't want to hold it in one spot too long. Uh, you, you basically want to heat just the emblem up so the glue that's holding the emblem on melts and you can pull it off. The tailgate camera I got came with standard uh, nuts and bolts. The problem is the little square holes you see in this picture, uh, there's no way to fasten the nuts behind it, uh, else you'll need snap-in nuts. I didn't have any snap-in nuts and uh, just wanted to get it done. So it took me a little bit, but I came up with the idea of just uh, using my glue gun. Uh, yeah, I could reach around in that big hole and sort of get the nut on the bolt and then use the glue gun to squeeze a bunch of glue on the nut and then hold it into the square hole to make sure it, it glues in. That took me a couple times because uh, the bolt got, of course got glued to the nut and I had a little issue with uh, the nut becoming loose but use enough glue it took me three four attempts to to get the nut to stick uh, total so two times on each side. Once you have the nuts attached to your tailgate on the inside and they're secure, you can fasten uh, through your camera to your tailgate. Don't tighten the bolts all the way yet. You want to make sure you don't crack those loose uh, just in case you have to disassemble. I came back after everything was done and torqued them down uh, and had no problem. The camera cable runs out the bottom of the tailgate and there's a hole uh, in your chassis. You can slide that through and that's what gets the cable underneath your truck. Connect up your wire harness. Uh, the yellow plugs go together for the extension. Uh, that delivers the video to the front part of your truck. And then the switch, connect the camera to the power switch. And then run the power cables up into the driver's side light. Uh, to remove the light, there's two screws off the tailgate, as you can see in the one picture. Uh, just you undo those and then your light pulls directly out and you can access the power assembly. I originally had it connected uh, to the blue wire on the reverse light and the ground. Those connectors didn't work very well because the camera light cables are sort of small, so it wasn't making good ground. And also what I found out is uh, there's some issues with Ford's detecting the cameras if they're not powered on all the time when you uh, switch to reverse. So, And then the other nice thing, if it's powered all the way, uh, I found out that 
uh, when you put it down and drive, the reverse stays or the camera view stays on until you hit about five miles an hour. If you power it off the reverse, there's some intermittent problems uh, that I read on the forums. So after that, you get that connected, you get the power to connect to the cam. I just ran the cables on the ground up to the front part of the truck to test everything out. And then once I knew everything was working, then I ran up through the main power harness from the back to the front, came in the um, driver's side rear door. If you uh, pull those little strips up, uh, you'll see sort of a, a grommet, rubber grommet. Uh, if you push that out, then you can run your cable up through that and then alongside the door casings and then up to your radio systems. I'll, I'll take another picture later on and, and we'll walk through that. Accessing your Sync 1 display, this is actually the hardest part of the install, is removing the components to the dash and getting the display out. Um, the biggest thing is there are screws that are hidden under the panels and you have to go in the following sequence. You have to remove your glove box. Uh, there's two little tabs you push in so it drops down. And then there's three bolts up underneath the glove box to remove the airbag uh, screws. So once you remove those, you can pop your airbag out and then that will reveal a screw, a sort of a, a gold metallic uh, sort of brass looking screw that is holding on your air conditioning vent. So once you move, remove that screw, then you can pop off your air conditioning vent. I started at the very bottom and popped it up and just used my fingers and, and it will come off. It's just snapped in there. And then either you can disconnect the, uh, the control or you can just sort of put it to the side, depending on how much room you have in your truck. So once that's removed, you'll see a screw in the top right for the main panel. That's uh, number three there. And uh, you'll also have to take the very top part off of your dashboard where the, the tray is up there. There's a little rubber mat. You just get a little screwdriver, lift the rubber mat out, and you'll see two screws up there. Those need to come out. You lift your tray out and push it towards the, wi the windshield. It'll pop out. And then there's two screws under that that you need to remove that's uh, holding in the, the display panel as well. The fourth step is you pop the left or the driver's side air conditioning vent up. You can't take it out, but you can pop it up enough, starting again from the bottom and working your fingers up. And then you just sort of pry it up enough to reach the top screw in the very uh, top left of the main panel. So once you remove those two top screws and then there's two screws at the very bottom of the main panel you again you can pop that main panel off and then you can have access to the connectors in the back on the main panel there's two connectors there's one at the top and there's one at the very bottom I would suggest removing the bottom one first that's a little easier you just pinch on both sides and pull it off and then you can sort of flip it over a little bit to look at the connector at the top the top one's a little tiny. Uh, there is a little uh, connector pin that you need to press with your fingernail uh, in order to get that popped off. That, that one was a little tricky and took a little bit. Uh, after that, there's four screws uh, that you undo to remove the display from uh, the radio mount. Once you've got the display removed, you're going to remove the cable, uh, which is the bottom lower picture, number three there. And this is really a good time to take a look at the serial number and the model number and go to the 4D tech site and check the compatibility. There's a video there I linked to. I'll put it all down in the descriptions as well. It'll show you how to ohm out the screen to make sure it has the 70 ohm video chip in it. Uh, also, they list a set of compatibility displays and also displays that are not compatible with the cable. So as long as your display measures 70 ohms across pin 6 and 12 or it's on their compatibility list, you should be good to go. Once you have the display out, you're going to attach the Y cable. And there's a video also that shows you how to do it. My, the connectors on this was slightly different than the ones I had at, at factory. There is a locking pin 
uh, that needs to be open all the way before it's going to slip down in the in the display connector. Uh, I at first thought maybe it wasn't compatible, um, and then I found that video, and you need to really move that connector all the way open, and then it will start to slide down and lock into the display. And then similarly with the other side, uh, the factory harness will go in. There is there was no lock pin on my factory harness, but it does clip in and stay there as well. So this is what you use to uh, why your connection and on this cable is a little RCA video input. It's yellow as well that you connect the extender cable to from the back of the camera. Uh, well, from the camera that's in your tailgate uh, to the camera. The other thing I noticed about the camera is I got a uh, uh, four door extended cam uh, pickup truck. The extending cable on that video was was about four foot, three foot, three to four foot short. So I had to get a uh, male to male adapter and then a four inch another video cable to be able to finish the run. It stopped pretty well at my front door on the driver's side and then the adapter cable connected and then I ran it all the way up uh, the dash and then over into the radio compartment to connect to the cable. Once you have everything connected and know it's working and outputting a video signal, I actually connected it into another display. I had a video input display to make sure the camera was displaying correctly uh, before I put everything up and wired everything up and then connected it to the display in the truck. But you need to program your modules to tell it it has a backup cam. This is the trick. Uh, I didn't find anybody that had an original sync 4 inch screen system uh, without add-ons or mods uh, and all the advice was to change it in the APM, uh, the BCM, those don't work. And I, I found a post that said those are really for the upgrades to the SYNC 2 and SYNC 3 systems. Um, the one module and the only module that I found that worked was uh, the FCDIM module. It's not listed on the 2013 F-150 uh, uh, 4Scan Excel sheet as a module but it does show up when you run your when you're scanned so essentially you're gonna go into that module and there's a bunch of directions on how to use for a scan I'm not gonna repeat all this there's tons and tons of videos out there of how to load it run it edit uh, the module so take a look at those but essentially once you get into the FC DIM module it's the first line there so the 7A5-01-01, it's the second digit. So mine was a zero. Uh, I just added two. I found a video out there of a guy who did this on a, a different vehicle. I think it was a Ford Fusion or um, one of those transit vehicles. He added two to the number he had there in the second place. Uh, so I thought, well, I don't have anything else to lose. I've tried all the other modules. Nothing was working. Uh, I programmed the the two, so mine turned out to be two 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 one in the first uh, white box there. So you can see I just added two to the second digit. I wrote it, um, turned it off, turned it on, put it in reverse, and bang, I had a backup camera. So that's really the trick to the original Sync One systems. It's not in uh, all the other modules that you see. There's cameras to enable. This is the only place I found that works. So hopefully after you, you follow this, um, uh, you'll have a backup camera as well. So here's the rear backup camera. The camera's actually here. I haven't put my emblem on it yet because I want to make sure it's working. Um, don't know if you can see this, but uh, there's where the uh, cable comes out. It runs into the back of the truck. I'm gonna go underneath the truck and turn around. So you can see the cable up here. I ran it across, here's where the switch is. The switch is actually up here uh, to protect it. And then uh, the power cables run up here into the uh, driver's side rear view light. And uh, the video cable connects here out of the switch. And I actually purchased uh, these, this plastic split tube uh, to put the wire in just to protect it a little bit more. But it runs up, as you can see, this power harness 
goes all the way up to the front, uh, sort of up around the gas tank, uh, um, up towards the front, and then rolling out, rolling out, uh, it comes up right here. You can see there is uh, where it comes into the passenger side up here. Into a little hole. And uh, this is where it comes up. This is the passenger's driver's side uh, rear view door. And there's a little grom red, there's a little uh, rubber grommet under here that you can pop out. And then I just brought the, the cable, ran it up along the side here. This one pops up too. You can just take this up, ran the cable up. Here's where I connected my extension cable and I put it under here. And then there's a power harness up here I strapped into. Um, here is the, the Bluetooth reader that plugs into your ODB port. Um, it runs over here and then up the back into the radio. So, just review, just review what, uh, what you gotta do to take your dash off. Um, you have to pop out your, your glove box here. There's little tabs here. You just push and then this will drop down. And then there's, the screws are up underneath here. There's three screws that mount to your airbag. You pop that out. It'll reveal a screw here. For this air conditioning vent, you just start down here. And you just pop it out, see? And work your way up. Well, I'll pop that back in later. You pop it out, and then there's a screw here. A screw down here. Um, and then you gotta pop this one out as well. Doing the same thing. It won't come off, but you pry it out, and there's a screw here, and another screw down here, and then this is your your accessory here. You just lift this little rubber mat out. I don't have a screwdriver, but you take that out, and there's a screw here, a screw here, and then you take this plate out, and then inside here, there's a screw here, and a screw here you gotta take out. And then you can pop this assembly off. And then it'll come off and then that, that will show you your four bolts that you're gonna mount to get your display out. So here, here we go. I did notice now that the camera's on there longer. It does take a little bit longer for the display to boot. We'll turn the radio on so you can see the display there. And then putting it in reverse. Boom. There's the backup camera. So there you have it. Hope that helps.